Assessing the contribution of vascular pathology to cognitive impairment has long been a challenge for clinicians and also for neuropathologists. In most diseases that cause dementia, we have well-defined pathological markers. In Alzheimer's disease, for example, the brain accumulates deposits of A-beta peptide and tau that form plaques and tangles. These accumulate in a very predictable distribution that tells us how advanced the disease is. Vascular disease can cause cognitive impairment or dementia, but we don't have such predictably distributed markers. Uh, vascular pathology doesn't progress in a nice stereotype pattern. And vascular abnormalities are very diverse. There are multiple different abnormalities that can affect the walls of blood vessels of different size and in different parts of the brain and result in a spectrum of abnormalities of the brain parenchyma. One of the commonest vessel wall abnormalities is arteriolosclerosis, the replacement of muscle tissue by collagenous connective tissue. Another common abnormality is the replacement of muscle tissue in the vessel walls by A-beta peptide causing cerebral amyloid angiopathy. Rupture of blood vessels of course causes hemorrhage. The main lesions produced by narrowing or occlusion of vessels are infarcts like this one in the basal ganglia. Often the damage caused by reduced blood flow is more subtle as in this case. Here, the damage is evidenced by loss of oligodendrocyte nuclei, and you can see surrounding arteriolosclerosis. We wanted to find out whether neuropathologists could agree how to define and assess cerebrovascular abnormalities. Secondly, whether they could do so in a way which was reliable and reproducible. And finally, whether we could identify a small number of key abnormalities that would serve as markers of more widespread vascular disease and could be used to predict whether cognitive impairment in a particular individual was attributable or not attributable to vascular pathology. Nine UK-based neuropathologists, mainly from the Brains for Dementia Research Network, were participants in a series of Delphi surveys used to develop a consensus protocol for assessing and reporting cerebrovascular disease. The protocol included assessment of 14 different pathologies in 13 brain regions. We tested the reproducibility of the protocol in a cohort of 113 cases that had varying degrees of cerebrovascular disease. Sections of fixed brain tissue were circulated between neuropathologists in seven UK centres. Statistical analysis showed very good agreement in scoring between neuropathologists, indicating the protocol to be reliable. We then looked for any relationship between the vascular pathologies and cognitive impairment as assessed prior to death. And this showed seven pathologies significantly contributed to the cognitive impairment. Further modelling showed that just three of these pathologies in combination provided the best predictive accuracy, including cerebral amyloid angiopathy in occipital meninges, arteriosclerosis in occipital white matter and large infarcts. Various combinations of these three determinants can be used to report a low, intermediate or high likelihood that cerebrovascular disease contributed to the cognitive impairment in an individual case. So by just looking at three abnormalities, we can say with reasonable confidence whether vascular disease contributed to cognitive impairment in life. Uh, this opens the way to a range of studies in which we can look at the contribution of vascular disease to cognitive impairment more generally, including in people with mixed disease, and by looking at the clinical and biochemical findings in individual cases, we hope to be able to refine the way in which we can diagnose vascular cognitive impairment during life.